Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today it was day two of the MicroStrategy Conference and we had positively everybody coming out as far as trying to gain the institutional trust and become their custodians. We had everybody from Binance to NYDIG, Fidelity Digital Assets, uh, all the way up to Genesis, uh, Grayscale, and then finally uh, my man up here, Mike Novogratz. So we're gonna see what they said and mostly it's the same type of thing, but there were some really good nuggets and things that even I didn't know about. And I can just tell you right, right now, uh, this will definitely be the year of cryptocurrency and digital assets once you take a listen to what these guys had to say. So we'll take a look at that. Also, uh, U.S. Library of Congress says most countries lack clear tax guidance on crypto staking. Surprise, surprise. Uh, U.S. is not even in the running. And finally, we'll take a look at the portfolio review. So we did this last time, it was a pretty big hit, and we're just gonna take a look at people's portfolio, or actually subscribers, and my predictions, and just see where they would be and uh, what I would recommend if it was my portfolio. Again, not financial advice. So we'll go over all that, but first, let's take a look at what is going on into the market. So right now it is uh, February 4th, it is 3 p.m. El Paso, Texas time, beautiful day here, 72 degrees in the end of January, I just love it. And uh, here's what we got, uh, Bitcoin, it's uh, up, up a percent. So not too bad, uh, not too great, whatever else. But look at XRP, uh, 20%. Uh, good for you guys who are holding XRP. Hope it's not another pump and dump. Uh, hopefully there was something, some big news that really would cause that. Binance Coin is up 10%. Doge up 35%, looking pretty good. Uh, what else we got? 42% for Aave. Pretty much the same things that, that we saw in the morning. I don't think there's anything really big. Synthetics. Synthetics, I have to tell you, it has uh, been on my radar now for quite some time. And uh, the, the founder, uh, the one who actually created it, uh, I've got a lot of good input from Weston Nelson. He is the uh, community manager there over there at TTC. And he says, don't sleep on this one, Rob. This one can be uh, fantastically huge. So Synthetics and Matic, you can put those over onto Celsius. I think it's like 18% yield right now. So there is something definitely going on and something to look at. So uh, that's what's going on in the market. Uh, just real quick. One of the things that I like about uh, Trade the Chain, let's take a look at this projected range here. Let's see, let me move this over. Yeah, so good thing about Trade the Chain is it gives us sentiment analysis like we always talk about, direct API and Twitter, all the Twitter volume, news is what moves everything in my opinion. So what's the next ones? Uh, Cream Finance, I have no idea what Cream Finance is again, but uh, these projected ranges from what the tie tells me, uh, this is the company that put together Trade the Chain, they have a 90 to 93% um, accuracy rate and right now you're looking at cream finance sure it's going for the next hour it's going to be between negative 1.8 to 14 percent and i would definitely get in that one i'm not a big trader but uh, i'm learning to do so with the help of uh market rebellion and ttc but looking pretty good see a coin uh zero this one looks pretty good eight percent even though it's bearish oh, maybe not swissborg swissborg was another one that was just coming up i think it's either going to be synthetics or it is going to be Swissborg for the next one I'm going to invest in. And the reason is, is because they have a real token utility. I believe they are the next Voyager. Anyhow, this is what's going on. If you want to take a look at that, there's a link in the description. Let's just jump into today's, uh, the top stories today. Huh? So I know you don't have a lot of time and uh, that's why you got me. And uh, what I did today was just take a look at what was going on with Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy. And uh, they had a pretty big conference over the last two days. I've been talking about this last uh, two days in the channel. And this morning, uh, we just went over some things about yesterday. And yesterday, it was, it was mostly uh, Michael Saylor pretty much just talking about you know, what's going on uh, and how they did things. They essentially gave the playbook to these corporations and big entities and said, hey, this is how we did it. And this is exactly how things are ran over here at MicroStrategy to get us into Bitcoin. And uh, here's, here's the books, just do whatever you wanna do. And they just pretty much gave it to them for free. So I think uh, just that alone is going to be huge. But they had some pretty big hitters uh, in this whole uh, seminar that they had. And the first one, uh, they had Binance. And I'm not going to go over everything that was said. What I did was I, I tweeted out the different statements that uh, these people made that I, that I found was interesting. So you can take a look at all of them. Uh, just follow me on Twitter. And uh, again, link in the description. And you're going to see exactly what they said. But it was interesting to me that First of all, they were all there. And if there was one word, if there was two words that were, was used the most there, one was Bitcoin, obviously. 
And the second one was white glove, white glove service. It's like every single one was like, you guys don't have to do anything. Just bring your money and your checkbook and some documents and we'll set everything up. We'll do everything for you. These guys, I mean, Binance, Grayscale, Galaxy Digital, Genesis, uh, Kraken, uh, all these big people, Gemini, they want these institutions in there. And what was said in this seminar, and you can take a look at the other videos before, but uh, it only makes sense to go this route in this way. Now, again, they're going to take a real hard look at it, but we will see. So let's just take, I just want to take some of the snippets that I found uh, was pretty interesting. And then uh, let's see. So Binance says, we started out business, business to consumer, uh, but our corporate clients have increased by 38% just last quarter alone. So if you can remember back in 2017, the institutions were not even here whatsoever. So to go from there to here and have all these institutions come in, and this is just the first quarter. We're in the very first inning. So uh, I think these guys are you know, going to do the right thing as far as like you know, getting uh, these inroads in for these institutions. Uh, this one was uh, the CEO of NYDIG, Robbie Gutman. And he said that, I found this interesting, was that he said that they've been talking to Mass Mutual for over three years, three years to get them to where they are now. And again, no one wants to be the first, but nobody wants to be the last. And now there's things like, this is uh, Tom Jessup from uh, the president of Fidelity Digital Assets. And he said that they sent out a survey to all, all their corporate clients and 95% of them uh, respondents are going to allocate to digital assets this year. Now, I'm not for sure if that's Fidelity Digital Assets or if that is just Fidelity as a whole. If it was Fidelity as a whole, you have to remember that Fidelity has like seven or eight trillion assets under management. So if that's the case, jeez, watch out. And let's see what else we have. <laughs> I'm waiting for the Mike Novogratz talk. This one was interesting. I'd never heard of Genesis before. And Genesis has been around since uh, 2000, 2013, 2014. They were uh, an OTC uh, for, for big time players, institutions, and high net worth individuals. And uh, their big thing is they said, you know what? Uh, doing OTC was really good in the beginning, and it's, it's, it was like uh, the very first step. But now we're seeing more things like derivatives, uh, other types of you know, futures. And the big thing that they're seeing is that people don't want to stay into Bitcoin. And for that, we have offered loans. And to, to us, to retail, it's not a big deal to talk about cryptocurrency loans. We see them on BlockFi. We see them on Celsius, Crypto.com. We see them everywhere. It's not like a big thing. But for these corporate and institution clients, I think it's, like Michael was saying here, it's kind of a game changer. I took a look at their website itself, and this is a, I'll link this in the description below. And they made a good point, which was this, yield, or excuse me, so like, I mean, they can get the loans and everything's good, and they can get in and out of positions, and they can collateralize. And he says beforehand, people just wanted to get out. But now they want to keep everything, but they want to get loans. And then on top of that, if they want to, put their cryptocurrency with them, there's also yield. And for us, again, yield is no big deal. If we go to Voyager, if we go to Celsius, now even with Gemini, they have this thing, um, a product called Earn. So all the different cryptocurrencies that you have on Gemini, you're actually going to be able to earn yield and a hell of a lot better than you will at any bank out there. I can tell you right that, like that. So uh, these guys are like, hey, high net, worth in, high net worth individuals, institutions, if you wanna keep your cryptocurrency here, We'll pay you. We'll pay you and then we'll loan those things out and it's all about collateral. The same thing that all the different places are doing. But now these guys are saying, hey, bring it to us, uh, a lot of it, and we'll pay you just for sticking it here. So if I'm a corporation and I'm thinking to myself, again, money's on fire. I need to, I need to do something to, to make sure that, that the revenue is there. Uh, what can I do? I can just transfer this over into Bitcoin first and then whatever else they want to do. And I can earn yield on that. And I can, that's a hell of a lot better than any kind of bond that I'm going to get right now, or, or especially interest on any kind of you know, bond bearing or whatever else. So, I mean, that to me is another game changer. It's just one more thing of why I think institutions are really going to be here to stay. Um, yeah, Bitcoin in your treasury is a, is a conversation starter, but loans and yield is the next step and brings people in. Michael Morrow, CEO of Genesis. And let's see. And then he also said this. Our lowest growth is in, is in spot training, loans and derivatives, et cetera, et cetera. It's interesting to note that large entities like Grayscale has billions of assets under management and no banks are involved. So think about that. All the different billions that are in, there's absolutely no banks. 
And Mike Novogratz talks about this in a little bit. And he says, hey, um, people are going to go from bank accounts to wallets in their phones. And it's going to happen a lot faster than people think. And it's already starting. So then we have that. Uh, this is Michael Sunshine, the Grayscale CEO. And he said two things that were interesting. First, he said that a couple years ago, three, four years ago, it was all about what is Bitcoin. And now it just becomes like there is no more of those, those, those conversations. Now it's more like the nuts and bolts of how they can really get onboarded. He goes, the typical institutional or institution and high worth net investor already knows all these things. And they're really coming to us to kind of solidify what they really want to do. So they have that part. And this was the most interesting one. He says, investors call us nowadays more heavily when there is a dip in the market so they can buy. Uh, before, when, uh, when people would invest into our, our trust, they would call us up and like, what the heck just happened? It went down 30%. This is, a, this is an awful deal. Why did you guys get me into this? Or whatever they say. But he goes, but now, if that's not the case. All these guys now are calling us to say, there's a huge dip. I need to allocate this much money. Get me as much Bitcoin as you possibly can. Sounds pretty good. And I think that it's going to continue like that. Uh, da, 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 da. What else? And then this one, this was my favorite, Mike Novogratz. So Mike said something. There's a couple of things he said that was interesting. I've never heard of this. I haven't heard of this yet. He says here, we have 300 million at Galaxy Digital to invest in the virtual, non-fungible tokens and virtual worlds. And he talks about there is... He said, he said, there is something that is going on right now that three weeks ago, or maybe he said th two months ago, people haven't even heard. It's called uh, NBA Top Shot. And it's, it's, it's a non-fungible token for all the, the greatest plays and, and players in the NBA history. And you can see, he goes, he goes, before he had a LeBron James card for nine bucks. Now it's selling for $71,000 as an NFT. He goes, uh, so these are the things that I think can be the absolute future and it's why we're putting in so much money this way. So non-fungible tokens, if you're involved in that, congratulations, you're way ahead of the curve. Even way ahead of me, because I was like, that. Ah, sure. So I'll link that also in, in the description. So these are just the things that are actually coming about. And then uh, two more things. He says, I'd rather look stupid than be stupid. People used to look at me like I, was, like I was stupid when I talked about Bitcoin. Now my phone rings off the hook. Does that sound like you? Does that sound like you when you talk to your friends and family and loved ones and you're like, hey, you really got to get into this coin. You really got to do this thing. It's going to be big. And then, of course, there's a huge dip and they're all laughing at you like, ah, you're a moron. You don't know what you're talking about. And you're like, just wait. Just wait. Mike Novogratz was in your exact same position. And then he says, um, this wasn't it. He said, yes, this one. He goes, he said it was tough. And I'm like, well, how, how tough can it be for a billionaire? But he said, you know what? We were the bridge for a long time between institutions and Bitcoin, but the institutions never came. We had meeting after meeting after meeting and absolutely nothing happened. And thankfully, COVID came around and we were able to talk about the macro. And he didn't really get into it, but I know what he's talking about. He says, it's not just about you know, COVID and people going inside and, and really can't get around, but it was also about the quantitative easing and the economic hardship. And all those things really played into effect. And before you know it, now they're like, hey, Mike, that thing that you were talking about, we really want to get into it. I really, I really think now that, that COVID had a pretty, it was a pretty big accelerant to what is happening in our space just for what happened. And uh, it was just interesting to note that, uh, you know, Mike here, who has been, you know, pretty bullish on Bitcoin for the longest time, even there are no overnight successes. There are no get rich quick schemes, even in cryptocurrency, things that go up, you know, 50, 200 uh, percent in a couple hours. You, you have to put in the work. You have to have the due diligence and you have to have the patience. So, again, all those things I talked about, the, the most the, what I thought was the most important, I put them on my uh, Twitter feed and you can check it out. I'll link it below. But let me know what you think about what's going to happen. What's your price predictions for, uh, for Bitcoin? Mine's 150K. And then I've got all different types of price predictions we're going to go over in a little bit. But let me know in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So this one. So this one concerned me because in my exit strategy, I talk about there's seven different criteria or things that I'm going to do. One of those is cash out. Others are stable coins. Others is putting into properties and uh, uh, my Amazon FBA business. But one I talk about is staking. And the problem with staking, in the U.S. at least, 
is that there are no clear guidelines as far as taxes, which I think could be good and bad. Uh, hopefully they get it right, but usually they don't. And I'm hoping that uh, they're just like, you know, him and haw until they kind of figure it out later on down the ride, that later down the line. I don't think they even understand what's going on with, with Bitcoin and crypto. So staking is like, what? I mean, it's just another level that I don't think they're going to get to anytime soon. So U.S. Library of Congress Law Division has released a report that shows major differences across global jurisdictions on taxation of crypto. Uh, study found that while tax departments are number, in a number of the 31 countries have published guidance, uh, only a handful have actually done anything. And I'll just skip all the rest of this stuff. So of the 31 nations, 16 have been identified as possessing specific rules or guidance. So congratulations to Australia, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Israel, Italy, Jam Japan, Jersey, Jersey, New Zealand, Norway, Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland, the UK. Those are the only ones that have actually passed like legitimate laws as far as like staking goes uh, or mine tokens. So uh, that is it. The rest of the, the globe is like, we don't know. And uh, that's how you know how early we are. Even the government can't figure out how much they're going to they're gonna rip you off. <laughs> and then uh, to finish up, it says, meanwhile, the number of countries who address the taxation of tokens obtained via staking stands at just five. Australia, again, Finland, New Zealand, Norway, and Switzerland. Uh, how nations tax the people who maintain cryptocurrency networks will obviously have a big effect on attracting or repelling innovators and investment, said Abraham Sutherland. Legal, legal advisor, the Proof of Stake Alliance. The results are all over the board. So, really, it comes out of this. If you are this, th this kind of feeds into the no man capitalist uh, type of mentality. If you are rich in staking, you have a lot of cryptocurrency that you're staking somewhere, and you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, where do I go for this? What do I do with all the, all this this crypto that I have? Because I could stay in the country that I live in. Or maybe I could go to some other type of country uh, that is a little bit more lax. And instead of paying, you know, 25, 35, 40%, I can go someplace where it's only 5% or 6%. And that really is what it's going to come down to, I think. If countries start to massively tax their citizens, then those citizens are gone. I think a lot of the days of you have to be in a certain state, country, or territory because of your job are slowly slipping away. Now there are jobs that you gotta be there, but I see a lot of jobs uh, that can be just uprooted and you can move anywhere. You can do it from anywhere uh, as, as far as like um, remote working. I mean, there is Zoom, a lot of places have uh, the internet. If you don't have internet, you can get Starlink through uh, Elon Musk's uh, type of service. But I just, the, the days of, of heavy taxation to all the people uh, are going to fall, unfortunately, on a lot of people who are just stuck in the place that they have to be. And the ones that don't have to be there, and that's going to increase as time goes on, are just going to get the heck out. So that is what I got uh, for that piece. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And then lastly, uh, before I move on to the portfolio re review, I will just say this. Taxes are coming up in the U.S. Uh, taxes are, are due everywhere, actually. So, you know, we've, friends of the show, uh, CryptoTrader.tax, uh, there's a link in the description. You can get 20% off right now. But also you can enter to win uh, for a free uh, unlimited tax report, $300 value. Uh, you just put in your first name and email, and they, they, they draw one every week all the way up until April. If you need help right now, then use that link below. And this is for everybody in the entire world. It'll There is a direct API for all the different exchanges, even the crappy ones, and they can pull the data in, and they can show you unrealized gains, tax gains, losses, and everything else. And you can just spit it out to whoever is your um, tax advisor wherever you live and it just helps like that. So uh, go ahead and give that a shot. And uh, that is it for that. So let's move on to, I think, one of my favorite, my newly favorite pieces that we've been doing, which is the uh, portfolio review. I get this a lot. I get this a lot everywhere. Like, um, hey, i really into this project. And what do you think of this? And uh, I really think about this one's going to go to the moon. What do you think? So here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, if it is outside of my, my portfolio, I'm not going to really give you too much of an opinion unless I'm actively uh, researching it. So I don't really know. So like on this one, this is from um, this is from Bill. And he's most of the stuff is on, uh, I have in my same portfolio, actually more than half. Uh, but there's some like Elrond, Luna, HBAR, Binance Coin, Nano, and Cosmos, I have no idea. I have no idea uh, what to do with those. 
Uh, and that that's just it because, you know, I, I haven't done enough research. So for everybody who says, you know, what do I do with this? Just keep it because you never know. Uh, it could be the next million dollar token. I have, I have no idea. But for the other ones here, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, Polkadot, Uniswap, Voyager, Aave, uh, VeChain. Oh, I forgot about VeChain. Um, when you take a look at this, um, just based on my price prediction and where I think, because I can give you a price prediction uh, looking at all the data that I have and the probability that's going to happen. And what I did with, with bills here is I just plugged it all in. Actually, VeChain 33656. Let me see. Got to put that in. Forgot to put that. 33656. So this portfolio right here, for Bill, I would just say like this. Just looking at this, every, all the ones I don't know or don't really care about, I'll be honest with you, Litecoin down, well, actually Crow down, um, just keep them. I, I don't know what else to do with them. But uh, looking at this right here, Bill's got eight Bitcoin. That's pretty good. That's a lot. So uh, for that one, just uh, me personally, I have stopped dollar cost averaging Bitcoin because I think it's going to go to 150,000 and then come back down. So after 30,000, I'm like, I'm good. I'm going to put in other types of crypto I think has a, a better uh, return. Ethereum, he's got seven. If this was my portfolio, I'd be dumping a lot more into Ethereum because you never know. I'd also be dumping a lot more Ethereum or a lot into more Ethereum and Cardano. Cardano, he's got 17,000. First of all, first thing I would say, Bill, is definitely take a look at the DNews uh, staking pool, which you can find over at uh, danteachescrypto.com. Just click on ADA staking and uh, you can earn between four and 6% with our staking pool. Just, uh, just a little uh, selfless plug, selfish plug, excuse me. <laughs> Chainlink, uh, I would keep that. Polkadot, I think at 234. Me personally, I would keep dollar cost averaging in. Uniswap, I would st still keep dollar cost averaging in. Voyager is my big one. I would definitely start to put more in there. I think Voyager is a $30 token. I've talked about that many times. Uh, VeChain, I can see going to a quarter, so I would def definitely keep, keep dollar cost averaging in there. And then it all depends on what you want to do. Again, this is just what I would do. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. But just looking at what Bill has right here, and if you run the numbers for my predictions uh, that I have, Bitcoin 150,000, Ethereum at 10,000, Chainlink at 35, if I add all these up from what his current holdings are and just do this, See that in the bottom right-hand corner there, where it's flashing right now? Bill has over a million dollars. Whoops, hold on. That's not right. Right here. Let's do that. Ah. There. Bill has over a million dollars. He's actually got one point, almost 1.5 million just on what he has right here. Not to mention the fact of all the ones that uh, I don't really know where they're going to go. I would assume they would go up, but who knows? It is cryptocurrency. So right here, Bill, his biggest play, Bitcoin. After everything that we saw with MicroStrategy and what's going on, I have no, I don't have much of a doubt that's going to hit at least 150,000. That's a reserve one. And I would like to note one thing, and that is that this, for Uniswap, my 2021 price prediction was $20. Uh, right now, I think it's already hit that, matter of fact. So, uh, again, my predictions are on the very conservative low side. So, I think at minimum, Bill here is going to hit, you know, over a million. But who knows? Uh, again, it is cryptocurrency. So, uh, I will link this uh, spreadsheet in the link below. And that's all we got for today. So, hey, if you made it all the way end, congratulations. If you liked it, why don't you give it a thumbs up? And also consider subscribing because all the things that we talk about are pretty time sensitive, just like the, just like the stories we talked about uh, earlier. Also, if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure, let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.